where Tanga Tanga is not supported. I don't think, I think the bishop must talk about his diocese. You know, he is in charge of that diocese. He's not in charge of the entire Catholic Church. No. If the people, if the faithfuls of the able diocese right. feel that way, that they are happy with what the deputy president is saying, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong with the bishop pronouncing himself. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chris Mike, is a of bishops in, uh, of <laughs> Catholics yes, in Parliament, I'll, I'll by the way. I Dr. Chris, but Mr. <laughs> Mike, I had the leader of Catholics. Mr. Mike needs also a chance to um, rope into the conversation. He's been a bit quiet. Mm -hmm. Let me play the devil's advocate in this scenario, especially in the second clip we saw um, those church leaders saying, if we had the number of visits from political leaders as opposed to this other regional block, mm -hmm. certain things, projects would be happening. Let's play the devil's advocate. At the end of the day, these churches are schools, aren't they? They are hospitals, they are community shelters for um, different places. At the end of the day, we could sit here and we could be mad at those comments, but is there an honesty behind it? Is there a truth behind it? Absolutely. What we are seeing is the reflection of the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's actually what I wanted to bring in when we are talking about constitutional review. Right. Mm -hmm. We are focusing on the wrong things. We are focusing on things that are individualistic to certain leaders. That's why I call them special interest groups and not focusing on the Mwana mm -hmm. Let me tell you, this, these churches, it's all a fight for resources. And they are feeling that the resources that are going around in this country are not reaching them mm -hmm. yeah if we if, if everybody had a job if everybody could go to hospital and get well and get medicine to be treated if everybody could take their child to school mm -hmm. if everybody could take care of themselves and their family I can bet you nobody will care whether you have 10 presidents five prime ministers 50 cabinet secretaries they wouldn't care mm -hmm. but right now there's so much concentration of wealth and power in people who are doing the wrong thing with that wealth and power that everybody else feels starved. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll challenge my friend from, uh, from, from, from Nyeri, Madera constituency, mm -hmm. right? This bishop would probably not have made those comments mm -hmm. if the DP was not carrying goodies. Mm -hmm. Aha. Mm -hmm. So everybody now is beginning to say, listen, we are so starved down here, yeah. where are the goodies and we'll follow that person for the goodies. Not for their leadership, mm -hmm. not for what they're able to do to make our lives better, <laughs> but for what we are going to get from it. Mm -hmm. And that is wrong. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with the deputy president going all the way to Embu as a deputy president to change a contractor of a road. It means that. we have a complete yes. broken system. There's no way as a deputy president I'll do that. We have institutions mm -hmm. to do that work. So we are using our power, we are using our money wrongly. We need to focus, guys. Mm -hmm on how do we put money in Mwanainchi's pockets. Right. How do we enable our people to live properly, take care of themselves, take care of their families. Dr. These churches' endorsements are just endorsements. People power is that matters, and that's, that's, that's the finality of it all. Dr. Chris is about to fall off from his seat, so I need to rope him in. Dr. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> is, is all this necessary? Should we, at the end of the day, because uh, uh, this is disrespect. This is disrespect to the Christian faith. Should we, at the end of the day, say that you guys, as, as politicians, no more church for you individuals? We've seen what's been happening. Three weeks ago, the drama that happened in a church, a place of worship. You never see it with other religious institutions. Mm. Where's the church tolerating it? Should you, as members of parliament, be barred from going and speaking in churches? Besides being a member of parliament, I'm the chair of the Catholic members of parliament in this country. And uh, from the perspective of the Catholic church, the Catholic church has clear structures. We have the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops. This is the one that outlines the direction of the church. And uh, Honorable uh, Bishop uh, of Embu, Paul Karyuki, as a spiritual leader, is supposed to provide direction. Mm -hmm. And he's not obligated at all from uh, the allegations of my friend here that he was saying this because the DP was bringing goodies. I don't think so. He's a bishop with little respect. He provides direction. But whatever he said, is also entitled to his own personal opinion. I don't think whatever he said was anything to do with the con congregation. I think that is as per his interpretation. And Article 33 of the Constitution is very clear. You are entitled to your own expression. But this, the, the position of the church, I think the spokesperson of the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishop, mm -hmm. the auxiliary, auxiliary bishop of, uh, of Nairobi, Bishop David Kamau, mm -hmm. he had issued direction as far as the church is concerned, where he said, please, Let's have a line between politics 
and whatever is supposed to be said in the church. Let me help so you with whatever, the exact words. Whatever, whatever Dr. Chris, said. Dr. Okay. Chris, let me help with the exact words. Uh, uh, Bishop Kamal said that uh, churches must remain true to what they are meant for. Yes. We would like our politicians to understand that we don't want to mix issues. Let us leave politics where it belongs and the church where it belongs. And so the question to you, as a Catholic, um, is you saying that the bishop was expressing his personal opinion, but that personal opinion once expressed in public is being personal. It can influence people who look up to him for leadership. And he did and, on a church and, 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 and it's okay. It's okay to persuade whoever you want politically or whichever other side that you may want. But the question I'm asking, is the church meddling in political affairs that it should not? Now, you can't rule out the church on matters of politics. The church contributes, plays a very critical role as True. far as politics is concerned. When you go to church, you listen to the bishop or the priest in matters of spiritual nourishment. But that does not mean that the spiritual leader doesn't have freedom of expression. In his That's house, why I'm not saying on the platform, mm -hmm. Dr. Chris. It, it does not necessarily mean that when he says that, the congregation will follow what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I think that's the wrong assumption. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I can say my opinion here. Okay. I don't have to influence you. So let's not uh, assume that whatever Bishop Karuki said, <laughs> the congregation will follow. No, I don't think so. They'll follow on matters of spiritual. But we should look at what Bishop uh, David Kamau said. He's, mm. a, he's a spokesperson of the KCCB. And that is the official position okay. that we must follow. O all right, Senator, what are your thoughts? Really, there's nothing new in um, uh, bishops and churches getting themselves involved in politics. It's been there. Mm. It was even there in the time of Christ. You remember the incident where he flushed out money lenders and uh, all sorts of uh, busybodies from the temple. The interesting thing mm. is that but Christ died within one week of dealing with the money lenders in that temple. Look at your Bible. Go read your Bible. It but, tells you how Peter, the kind of uh, uh, price you pay when you go to meddle in, in churches when they are doing their business. But oh. it is not to excuse uh, some of the com comments. For me, the, the most uh, gruesome comments is the one that came from the other leaders from the South Rift. Oh. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to that clip, because it went round, they said things to the effect that uh, we have a few days before the deadline uh, for 1,000 notes. <laughs> Even them, they want to get some of that money <laughs> before the deadline. Was it Even them, they deserve to get some of it. And to me, I, it, it was so gruesome that I didn't take it seriously. I thought it was satire. Mm. I thought they were trying to throw a jibe at somebody, uh, indicating that this person is trying to, to dispose of his uh, <laughs> illegal stash of money. But we, we churches should not <laughs> That's be... That's what read. <laughs> yeah, because when, when they say that uh, also come and visit us before the deadline... But <laughs> what, 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 what are they saying? And these are, these are leaders, these are church leaders. They, 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 they may not have the captions or the kind of authority that a bishop of the Catholic Church uh, would, would, would have. I don't know which denominations they represent.